All right, Biggie, this is Be Built by Browser. We're back at the Mecca, our old stomping ground, and we have a special guest today. We do. We have a special guest who's from uh, your neck of the woods. <laughs> so I, I'm going to let you guys I talk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak French that well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Adrien, tu viens de France? Exactement, je viens de France, oui, tout à fait. So Adrien comes from France, he's going to be here on vacation for three months. He loves California, he loves bodybuilding. And uh, just just like Stamo, he's hoping that maybe this will be his permanent residence. So, just comme Stan Animal, je dis en, en français que de Stan Animal est venu ici, Stan de Longeau, en vacances. Et il n'est jamais reparti, il est encore ici. Maintenant, c'est un succès, un pro succès. Exactement, ouais. ah, c'est ça, c'est ça le, le plan. C'est ça. Le plan, c'est mon rêve a toujours été de venir ici depuis tout petit, en fait. Et je réalise ce rêve et j'espère en réaliser beaucoup d'autres. So Adrian says his, his his childhood dream is to come to California and live here. So he's going to try to make it happen, and then uh, we uh, we hope for him the best. Well, also, and I, I understand that he's a fan of Jay Cutler TV. Yes. He's a fan of our show. Yes. <laughs> and so uh, now so he's on the show. Now he's on the show. <laughs> which I wanted to say, if you could just pan down, Jay Cutler TV. Boom, look at that, Jay. We just got him today. <laughs> Jay Cutler Athletics. Let me just say something, Jay, and this is serious. These are the most comfortable shorts I've ever worn in my entire life. I think I'm going to get every color. Yeah, yeah. He, he sweats like crazy, so this is good because it's, it's awesome. very light. These are awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so go on jaycutler.com to get your, your pair. Yeah, I think he's Definitely. got them in black and red also. <laughs> Adrien, bienvenue. Merci. Uh, on espère que tu restes avec nous pour un bout de temps. J'espère aussi. Merci beaucoup. Aye. Thanks. Thanks. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, trap training. I was asked a few times about how I've built the size of my traps. And the funny thing is that I don't do a lot of traditional trap training. I don't do a, a lot of heavy dumbbell shrugs and a lot of heavy barbell shrugs. I actually do uh, movements that uh, stress more of the, the back of the traps than anything else. But actually, this I guess the focus and concentration I use on squeezing the movement so much and using a full range of motion has allowed my entire traps to grow. But I really like to focus on the traps in the middle of the back to get that 3D effect and also in the upper part so that standing to the back, everything has that effect of you know pushing out towards the judges if you're on stage. So I'm gonna show you three of my favorite movements uh, for traps and maybe they can help you grow your traps as well. Okay, so this first exercise is actually a Smith shrug behind the back. What he's doing is standing out in front of the bar and he's leaning slightly forward so that the bar clears his rear end. And he's shrugging and sort of doing a little bit of an upright row as well. So it's not a shrug straight up. He's also bending the elbows a little bit at the top. And this is stressing his traps right here in this area. So that helps to give a real 3D effect to the upper back when he's standing relaxed and adds a lot to the back double bicep shot. So give those a try the next time you do traps. Hey guys, here on Built by Broser. And uh, on last show, uh, I talked about uh, the difference between doing dumbbell pullovers for the chest and dumbbell pullovers for the back. And I mentioned how it was one of the most underutilized exercises in the gym. And we promised you guys that I would demonstrate it for you. So that's what I'm gonna do today. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate how to do it for chest uh, primarily. I'm gonna show you a little bit more of an elbow bent position and lowering the dumbbell straight down towards the floor. And then I'm gonna follow that, follow that up with doing it for the back and the lats. Uh, right up under the armpits uh, where you'll see that the elbows will be slightly less bent and I'll be reaching further back behind me as if I was handing the dumbbell to somebody. So these subtle differences in the way you do it will help you target either the chest or the back to make it most effective for that workout. Okay, this next trap movement is a mid-back shrug done on an incline bench set at about 40 degrees or so. What we're working here is the mid-traps right in the middle of the back in this area right here. And what he's trying to do is a very, very short movement. I just call it a pinch. He's just pinching the scapula together at the top of the movement, keeping the arms straight and just getting that shrug straight up. He's not bending his arms and turning it into a row. That's very important not to turn this into a dumbbell row. And this way, we just effectively use the mid traps and we get that 3D effect in the middle of the back. Don't try to go too heavy because I want you to get a real good squeeze at the top and hold it for a second before returning to the bottom. Great movement for adding thickness to the middle of the back. Okay, this last movement for traps, I usually include this uh, during back because it kind of is in, uh, in between like a row 
a shrug, an upright roll, but it really hits the rear delts and the back of the traps really, really well. Uh, I want you to watch the way I do this very specifically because it has a very specific uh, performance to it. So what you're gonna do is you can actually stand uh, with your knees slightly bent. Uh, we're using a machine that you generally normally will do just stand up shrugs on, uh, but I'm gonna turn it into like a slight row. So I'm gonna lean forward a little bit and I'm gonna get my body down at about a 30 degree angle. And I'm gonna kind of go in between like you'll see a row and a shrug. Uh, it's a very, very precise movement, but you really feel the movement in the upper traps and in the rear delts. It's very, very effective for building mass and thickness in the upper portion of the back and into the traps. Uh, but again, there's another movement where people will probably want to go really heavy, uh, but it's better not to go heavy because the range of motion is short and you don't want to make it even shorter. Plus, you also really want to get that squeeze at the top. If you can't get that complete squeeze at the top, you're not going to get everything out of the movement. So just watch how I do this. I believe we're back at the Mecca and this is Ask on Monday and we're in the back. We're, we're very rarely out, but it's nice and sunny here. So, uh, you got some good questions. Yeah, I got some good questions today. Uh, first one was from our friend Mark Ramsey. He wanted to know, um, in my opinion, is uh, one like 40 minute session of cardio um, just as good as doing uh, two sessions broken into 20 minutes each, like in the AM and the PM. Uh, and I would say, I mean, basically pretty much the same. However, um, I do actually recommend that if people can uh, break up their cardio sessions into multiple sessions, that, that actually is better in the long run. Uh, because the more times that you do cardio during the day, the more you're going to get, uh, you're going to stimulate the metabolism. Oh, wow. Uh, so cardio, I mean, um, the thing about, you know, cardio versus weight training, like weight training actually stimulates the metabolism for a much longer period than cardio does. Cardio is a little bit more transient. Uh, so actually, if you can break up the cardio sessions into two, an AM and a PM, uh, and even if you do, if you have somebody who is on 60 minutes a day and you're able to do a morning, afternoon, and evening, that's even better. Uh, I know not, not everybody can do that, but if you can, it's gonna be optimal to do it that way. I'm not gonna say it's gonna make a huge, huge difference, uh, but you know, if you're doing a conscious prep of 16 weeks or something like that, uh, and you can break your cardio sessions, yes, it will be a little bit more efficient uh, to break them up because you will keep the metabolism stimulated more times during the day, and you will end up burning more calories overall. Awesome. Next question is from Kim Bridges. Hey, and, Kim. Hey, Kim, how are you? <laughs> is there any F, F, F bombs in there? Because we have to edit that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no editing on this okay, show. Okay. You know that. This is rated R. <laughs> uh, Kim wanted to know um, what are the top three chest exercises that I recommend for women to keep the, uh, you know, the boobs perky? <laughs> she said the girls. <laughs> the girls. No, she said to perk the girls. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not 100% sure if, if, you really can keep them, you know, keep them perky by doing chest exercises. I don't know if it's ever been proven. Yeah. Uh, but I would say, I mean, if you're going to, I think for women mainly because most of their breast tissue covers up the lower portion of the chest. You want to focus on the upper portion of the chest. Uh, so all incline movements, uh, incline dumbbell presses, incline Smith presses, incline uh, barbell presses, hammer incline presses, uh, I would focus on that. I would also focus on incline flies. Uh, the cable crossovers, I would uh, focus more on the low cable crossovers rather than the high cable crossovers. Uh, and I think dumbbell pullovers are also excellent. So all movements that hit more of the upper portion of the chest or the clavicular portion of the chest, I think would be more beneficial because these muscles up here would probably keep everything supported. So if you're going to get some support like that, I think it would be inclined movements that would do it. Um, and uh, also because I would do it anyway because if you're going to, um, like I said, the muscle tissue that's going to show is really going to be more on the top. So if you're a figure competitor or a physique competitor, uh, you really want to focus on the upper chest. So incline movements mostly. All right. So one more question today uh, from Mike Henson. Uh, he wanted to know for um, a natural lifter, um, is a typical body part split uh, best or should we hit the same body part more than once a week? And this, I, you know, I've answered this many ways before and I don't really necessarily think this has to do with whether you're natural or enhanced. I think you have to look at, uh, you know, what body parts on you are strong and what body parts are weak. Uh, if you have, if body parts uh, grow easily for you, uh, then I think that hitting that body part once per week with a very, very intense workout is adequate. I think when you have a body part that's weak, one of the reasons why, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why a body part could be weak. I mean, you know, obviously there's partially genetics involved. Uh, there could be nerve force problems, um, you know, that you're not actually getting 
uh, as great of contractions of the muscle as you could. That could be an issue where you might want to see a chiropractor, a physical therapist. Um, it could be that your form is a little bit off. I mean, there's a lot of different reasons. But uh, sometimes people, you know, they're training a body part, you know, very efficiently and very well but they just need to have, a certain muscles need to be hit more often. Uh, they just need more stimulation. So I would say for a body part that is very, very weak, I would give it two full workouts a week, uh, something like a Monday and a Thursday. Uh, for a body part that's stubborn, um, I would give it a full workout and then a mini workout. So say, let's just say it's chest uh, and your full workout is on Monday and you do say 12 work sets. Uh, maybe on Thursday you would want to do a half volume workout of maybe six work sets. Uh, I wouldn't really focus on more than two weak areas at a time. Um, so if you have you know more than that, I would do it in cycles. So let's just say you have uh, chest uh, and uh, quads and triceps. Those are your weak body parts. Uh, for four weeks, maybe focus on the chest and triceps. Uh, and then drop the triceps back to once per week and then add the quads in twice per week and just keep cycling around like that until those body parts catch up. So again, I don't think this is really a natural versus not natural thing. This is just depending on what your body needs uh, and what your body needs to grow. So um, like I said, weak body parts, either uh, two full workouts or one and a mini workout later in the week and you should be good to go. Thanks, Merlin. Got it.